week at DSCI, one of the largest trade shows in Europe. I have here with me Geoff Hitchcock, who is the Chief Revenue Officer at Redcat. Welcome. Thank you. So first off, I'd like for you to take me through what some of the products that Redcat is showing this week uh, that we have here. Okay, yeah. So we got, a, we got a couple of different things going on this week, right? Um, right out of the gate, we'll talk about our short-range reconnaissance winner for the U.S. Army, which is the Black Widow system and the web controller. This has been de in development for probably four years and down-selected last year, and we're now in full-rate production for the Army. Basic concept of this, this is a, about a four-pound air vehicle that is modular, which is different from everybody else on the planet. And invariably, somebody's gonna fly one of these into a car, into a wall, and break it. If they break an arm, the operator just needs a screwdriver, and they can change the arm in the field and can still continue to fly. It's like a two-minute change. Same thing with the entire camera assembly on it, right? If they, if they dork the gimbal, they have the ability to just replace the gimbal in the field. They don't have to send it back to us so they can stay operational longer, right? So this is an eight-kilometer air vehicle that flies for 45-plus minutes. We use a RF resilient radio for jamming purposes. Everybody's tracking what's going on in Ukraine very closely with GPS denied and RF interference. Uh, so we use a Doodle Radio Lab, or Doodle Labs radio in this particular bird, and it jumps, it scans, it scans and hops between all six bands that are in the radio. Some hop within a band, this hops across all six. So as soon as it feels it's being jammed, it'll immediately switch to another frequency on its own. Just happens automatically. And was that a lesson that you guys drew from Ukraine? Or absolutely, was... absolutely. We took this bird early stages uh, with this radio to Ukraine probably two years ago, did some flying at a test site against known RF jammers, and we were successfully able to get out to about four kilometers, point the camera down, take a picture of the jammer, and then come back home. And what sort of mission sets or operations would this be most effective in? Yeah, so this is this is a typically this is a uh, ISR platform, right? Intel surveillance reconnaissance. Um, it's used for convoy escort, used for route clearing, used for CSAR, and because of the software that we use, uh, the UI for actually flying it, used for targeting, right? So unique thing about this is this utilizes the uh, ATAC UAS tool as the user interface. Right, those that aren't familiar with ATAC, ATAC is a network interface to distribute your video, which has been around forever and ever and ever, and all ground guys are using that. What's different is it also gives you digital terrain elevation data. It tells you how high you are at your starting point so you don't fly into the ground, right? Um, and you always had to go to ATAC to suck that down to go fly a mission. Well, and you had to run a separate UI to fly the bird. And we're like, okay, let's work with Booz Allen Hamilton and just fly it straight out of ATAC. We're the only ones, to my knowledge, in this class that are doing that. So it's one app, does targeting, does your digital terrain elevation, and you're actually flying out of ATAC. And so far, everybody we've, we've demonstrated that to, they're like blown away by that. That's the greatest thing since sliced bread for them. And you know, someone could argue this week, we're seeing a lot of drones, different types for different mission cases. Um, it's somewhat of a crowded market already. What is the market for this and appetite that you see in Europe? How does this differentiate from other drones already on the market in your opinion? Yeah, this is a super challenging market, right? And again, I've been doing drones for 20 years. Right. Um, and I've used the analogy, it's sad but true, right? You come back here two years from now and we have this interview, half of these companies aren't going to be here anymore, right? Because it's a timing issue and it's a speed to market issue and it's a relationship issue with your end users, right? And taking that feedback and incorporating into your next gen of whatever you're gonna spin, right? And it is a very crowded market space. There's four primary things that end users are interested in. How long does it fly? How far does it fly? How good is the camera? And how much AI can you put on it? If you're leading one of those categories, that'll get you about 12 to 18 months before somebody hops over you. So literally, this is an iterate or die kind of situation. Absolutely, it's that marketplace. If you're just, you can't take a second to rest on your laurels, or you're going to be out of the game, mm -hmm. right? And that would be my advice to anybody who would like to try to get in, try to get into this, right? Hardware's hard. Well, this is some really exciting stuff. So we're going to look forward to see how it evolves. Thank you so much for your time with us. Thank you for the time. And then enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.